Board Technical Conference in docket number 23-057-15, application of Questar Gas doing business as Dominion Energy Utah and Fall West LLC for approval of a partial corporate reorganization. My name is Jacob Richardson and I'm the PSC's facilitator for this conference. Uh, next we'll have everyone in the room introduce themselves followed by those joining us on the phone. So if we can start over here please. Uh, Rory McDonald, Dominion Energy. Jennifer Clark, Council for Dominion Energy. Corinne Arnett, Dominion Energy. John Delaney, Public Service Commission. Melinda Crandiel, Public Service Commission. Eric Martinson, Public Service Commission. Yvonne Hogel, Public Service Commission. Brenda Salter with the Division of Public Utilities. Ryan Daigle with the Division. Uh, Matt Pernicoli with the Division. Gary Smith, the Division. Doug Wheelrow with the Division. Patrick Grehew, Assistant Attorney General, uh, representing the Division. Trisha Schmidt, AAG, representing the division. Thad LeVar with the PSC. Avni Nathar Abdullah with the division. Philip Russell with the Utah Association of Energy Users. Robert Moore with the AG representing the OCS. Jacob Zachary, OCS. Dave Clark with the commission. Eric Gordon with the division. Kelly Mendenhall with Dominion Energy. And Austin Summers with the meeting. Austin Energy. Summers, Dominion Energy. <laughs> well, thank you everyone for introducing themselves in the room. And we will now move to those on the phones, please. This is John Harvey, uh, Commissioner with the Commission. A Andrew Langstaff with that. Air Lowry with Dominion Energy. Uh, Newport Guard, Council for Dominion Energy. Hi, good morning. I'm Katie Atwell with Dominion Energy. Katie Atwell, Dominion Energy. Okay, my understanding is that we will have some confidential material presented in this tech conference. So um, if we can, I guess, try to verify everyone who is on the call. Um, it sounded like there were mainly Dominion employees. I, I couldn't hear who was who was speaking from the number ending in 2-3. Okay, can the number ending in 2-3 please identify yourself? Yep, Andrew Langstaff from Enbridge. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Um, I guess we can just, we'll look at who's on the line when we get to confidential material, but for now we'll turn the time over. All right, we've got, yeah, we've got a breaking point where we can stop and do all that. Okay, so uh, thank you everybody for joining us today. Um, so I guess just as a preliminary matter, uh, I know there's probably a lot of questions about the Enbridge acquisition, and we will not be talking really about that today. This is really a discussion about a reorganization within Dominion that will get the utilities kind of set up uh, for a potential acquisition by Enbridge. So we'll kind of go into the details of what that means and, and why we're doing that. Um, but if you, if you looked at the application, uh, this is currently the structure of Dominion Energy Questor Corporation. So, as you all know, Questor Corporation um, was acquired back in 2016 by Dominion Energy. At that point in time, it was the holding company for Questor Gas, Wexpro, Questor Pipeline. And over time, that holding company has changed. Um, Questor Pipeline is no longer part of it, uh, but other gas assets have, have fallen underneath uh, that holding company. So. This is the current organization, and what we're proposing is to create a new holding company, and I'll explain why we're proposing that, and um, to reorganize the entities underneath Questor Corporation, or Q Corp is what I'm gonna refer to it as from here on out, uh, to look like this. Uh, so we got some questions from the division. A lot of the questions were, you know, just give us an overview of, of kind of each of these companies and how they inter interact or inter how they relate to Questar Gas, and then also we're going to go into the details of, of why we're why we're making this reorganization. So let's start off with Questar Corporation. 
I just kind of gave you an overview earlier of that. Uh, I guess one thing to note here is Questar Corporation continues to provide services to QTC, and the majority of those services are related to the building next door. So Questar Corp holds the lease on that building, and it administers that those those costs to all of the companies within that building. So um, those are really the only services that Questar Corp is currently providing. And under this reorganization, none of that would change um, in terms of, of how, how much Questar Gas pays at the building or anything like that, um, that agreement would just be, uh, would just follow Questar Gas. Just feel free, this is informal, so if anybody has any questions as we go along the way, just stop me. Or if uh, we have a lot of subject matter experts from Dominion on the phone, if I misspeak, just correct me, please. So, so I'm sorry. Yeah. So does that mean it would, st it would be under Fall West Hold Co? Building? I this believe would the, would the, would that agreement? Q Corp would be. You, are you talking about, you're talking about the lease? <clears throat> yeah, the services to QGC. That's the lease, right? Yeah. The building. Um, but there's no Q Corp under the Fall West Hold Co. Right. So, so that agreement, I believe, would go to, am, am, am I speaking that term, I say I believe that agreement would go to Paul West Holdco? Yeah, I believe that's the plan. Yeah, I think that, that's, that's still being evaluated. Okay, so they'll own the bill, have the lease. They'll have the lease, yeah. Either it'll be, yeah, transferred or subleased or whatever, that, that liability will end up going to Fall West Holdco. Yeah. Kelly, before you leave the slide, to, to, just to go a little deeper into the history, can you there's some significant differences oh, yeah. in the num in the dollar values yeah. on the. How do we so get from 57 yeah. to 4.8? Yeah. Yeah. So, um, 2016, we were acquired by Dominion, and at that point, you had a lot of uh, employees, a lot of services that were being provided by Questor Corporation. Like, for example, I believe Legal was Questor Corporation. That's I correct. think I may have been. I don't even remember who. If we were Questor Corporation, Fleet. Uh, human resources. So you had a lot of a lot of the corporate overhead costs were in the uh, holding, company. holding company, and then as that got reorganized, more more of those. So I, I think a lot of those, like for instance, the legal HR. By 2018, we had reorganized, and those were coming from Dominion Energy Services at that point. I think we still had some IT and fleet services that were being included in 2018, 2019. And so you, you can kind of see the natural transition over time of, of those services being moved out to the point where we're at now, where it's really just the building lease that's, that's included in the holding company. So those are expenditures from the gas company to the gas company. These are, these are, these are co costs going from the corporation to the gas company. So they, they'd be expenses on the gas company. So allocated, allocated expenses, exactly, yep. Okay, another one is DECP Holdings. And just as a reminder of where that ends up, when this is all said and done, that's going to be underneath the media energy. It's not going to be part of this uh, new transition. Um, and that's basically the holding po the holding company of Co Point. Is you probably are all aware in September, Dominion sold its remaining interest in Co Point. <coughs> so there's really nothing left in this, um, but it's currently a part of this. Uh, or it's underneath the umbrella of Questar Corporation. So as part of this reorganization, they're going to move that, that entity out. Uh, Questar Gas Company, all familiar with that. Um, I won't go into that too much. I did find it interesting. Our, our date of incorporation was July 20, 1934. So I didn't know that. So we learned something new every day. Um, but we, if, if you're interested in the intercompany transactions between Questor Gas and all of its affiliates, we file a annual uh, report every year in July. I think you can access that on the commission website. NYSEARCH Robotics. So uh, NYSEARCH Robotics is kind of an R&D uh, firm, and they do a very variety of projects, and we uh, contribute to them. Are you on the board of NYSEARCH, Eric? Or is no. it? Okay, I thought you were at one point. Uh -huh. Yeah, I was at, um, 
another one, another R&D firm, yeah. GTI? GTI. Okay. Anyway, this is similar to GTI. So uh, we do have a 5% membership interest in, in NYSEARCH, and um, we, so when they create technology that's used, um, we get some of the royalties from that. Uh, that information is confidential, I'll show you at the end of the presentation, but I, I will point out that those royalties are very small. Um, um, not, yeah, very small, um, but we do take those, those uh, royalties and we just reuse them uh, in, for R&D projects uh, as part of our R&D program. So that's our relationship with NYSEARCH Robotics, but that's another one of those entities that's currently sitting under Questor Corporation. And have you had that since the in inception of, since, in other words, June 2011, since the inception of the company? I or believe the corporation so. Of the company? Yeah, it's yeah. been around a long time. We were, we were an original member? Yeah. yeah. Okay. okay. So not, not a big um, piece of the puzzle, but, but it's an entity nonetheless. Uh, WexPro, you're all very familiar with WexPro. Um, you can see the services provided to, to, quest, to quest our gas and a lot of this information um, like the net, net income and, uh, and some of these will be provided in the confidential portion of the, of the presentation. Uh, but we wanted to kind of get this out um, in a non-confidential just because I think it makes the flow go a little better. WexPro 2, similar situation. 2014, WexPro 2 was created to allow uh, the comp WexPro to bring new properties into the WexPro agreement. Um, and so you can see that's, uh, they, Questar Gas has been a customer of WexPro 2 for, uh, since, since that time. And then WexPro Development kind of goes hand in hand with WexPro 2. So WexPro Development is what WexPro uses to go out and make an acquisition before it brings it to WexPro. Uh, before it brings it to the regulators for approval. So when WexPro makes an acquisition, acquisition it does it at its own risk and it stays in this unregulated uh, entity until uh, we receive commission approval for that to be moved into the WexPro agreement. WexPro services, oh, was there something on the phone? Okay, uh, WexPro's. Yeah, this is. Go ahead. Um, in terms of the reorganization that we're talking about today, uh, there isn't anything in this organiza reorganization that would change the, uh, I guess you'd say, the legal interest that ratepayers have in any of the WexPro-related entities? That is correct. Yeah. It shouldn't, ch it shouldn't change those relationships or any of the costs or anything, right? Basically, you're just you've just got these uh, entities reporting to under a new holding company, but in terms of all the agreements uh, and all the costs and everything, yeah, no, it should have no impact to to customers. Thanks for the clarifying question. Thank you. Uh, WexPro Services includes all of the employees of WexPro, and. Um, the reason for this, and Rory, correct me if I'm wrong here, but it's basically Wex was on kind of an, a different accounting system than the rest of Dominion, and so this just makes it easier for us to deal with payroll and all those things, That's right. um, just to deal with it in this in this company. So basically, all of the labor and labor overhead costs of Wex Pro are in this company, and then they get funneled into Wex Pro. Um, so that's that's just how they manage those costs. Questar Infocom, so Questar Infocom has been around for quite a while and they provide telemetry and other telecommunication services um, to Questar Gas and a number of other entities. So if you go hiking and you are on you know, a mountain peak and you see a bunch of towers and those, one of those probably belongs to Infocom. They've got um, a pretty good uh, network for, for that type of communications. And you can see over time, um, because technology is getting better, uh, the, the need and use of telemetry is kind of going down over time. So um, they're still, they still provide services to us, but uh, not at the level that they did you know, 10 or 20 years ago. 
Kelly. Was yeah. This, was that one one of the green boxes off to the right in the org chart? I'm trying to remember. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Yeah. So this one will go under Fall West Hold Co. Yeah. with all of the other Questar entities. Yep. Or Questar Gas, Wex Pro entities. Yep. Okay, this is a good one, and I'm glad you asked this question because it took us a while to figure out what this was. <laughs> so Dominion Gas Projects Company, <laughs> LLC. Uh, this actually is a company that did projects for CoPoint LNG facility. So um, as we reviewed this, we asked ourselves a question, does this really even need to be here? Right now, there's nothing in it. It's just a holding company. Um, so... It is part of the purchase and sale agreement, but I would not be surprised if you saw this um, be eliminated um, either before or after the transaction. But as of right now, it, it has no, no value. It's just a holding company and it has no, no relationship with Questar Gas or Wexpro or any of the other entities um, going to Fall West Hold Co. Kelly? Yeah. Why is anything related to Cove Point under Questar Corporation? Yeah, so it, over time, uh, Dominion had a master limited partnership. Um, and over time, they, they had a need to put gas assets in some, in, a, in one from, or move at gas assets from one company to another. And Questar Corporation was a holding company. And um, from their standpoint, it, that was where they wanted to put it. So, I mean, I guess from from a corporate standpoint, there's nothing sacred about Questor Corporation. It's a holding company, right? So you could probably put anything you want in it, um, and that's what they chose to do. And I think from their standpoint, um, they chose to put the majority of the gas-related assets um, in that holding company. So I think a lot of the pipelines were in there before they were sold. Co Point was in there before it was sold. So I just think that was a, kind of a, a natural place for all of the gas assets to kind of be, be held. So. Okay, now we're getting to the um, entities that will stay under Questar Corporation. So Dominion Energy Gas Distribution LLC, this is the holding company for the Ohio LDC and all of the all of the other related affiliates of the Ohio LDC. So once again, really no interact inter inter relationship with uh, with Questar Gas. Um, it's just another entity under Questar Corporation, um, and it is a holding company, so it doesn't have any customers or or uh, really any uh, net income. So East Ohio Gas Company. This is one of the three uh, LDCs that's being being um, that, that is included in the in the proposed transaction with Enbridge. So uh, it's the it's the Utah uh, Wyoming Questar Gas assets, the East Ohio Gas Company LDC, and then PSNC in North Carolina. So it's those three. And so this is the uh, LDC in Ohio. Now you'll notice that East Ohio provides some services to Questar Gas. So what those are, are those are hot tapping services. So uh, Ohio would be what we consider to be the center of excellence for hot tapping. So if you, want, if you don't know what hot tapping is, and Rory, correct me if I'm wrong, because um, Rory taught me what hot tapping was. <laughs> hot tapping is where a, let's say you need to do maintenance or, or some work on a line and you don't want to take all the customers out of service, you're actually able to leave the line in service, do the maintenance while the gas is in there serving customers. Um, but it takes a certain level of technical expertise to do it. And so basically we have an agreement with Ohio when we have to do that kind of work. They send their crews out, they do the work, we pay them for their time. Um, so that's, that's, uh, that represents the dollars that you see there. And other than that, there's really not a relationship between East Ohio and uh, Questar Gas. <coughs> okay, this one, um, Alternative Fuel LLC. So right now, this is a holding company that you, that's going to be used potentially for some grants um, related to some, some transportation projects. The, the description is confidential, and you'll see why. But that's the gist of it right now. It has no net income. It has no customers. It's just a holding company in case 
one of these grants is received, and it is a subsidiary of um, East Ohio Gas. Okay, so uh, this, this is a question. Please, par please explain the statement of paragraph two and paragraph seven. I'm not going to read paragraph two and paragraph seven. But par what paragraph two is, is describing is the, the second slide of this presentation that shows what the current organizational structure of Questar Corporation is with all of the entities. That's what paragraph two is describing. What paragraph seven is describing is what we are proposing to do. So just as a summary, underneath Questar Corporation, you have all those entities, but we're just, let's just focus on the Questar Gas and Wexpro related entities. So that would be Questar Gas, the, the, I think there's four Wexpro companies, Infocom, and then that uh, NYSEARCH. We're going, and then the, I guess the, the Code Point Projects Company, but we don't, that one's probably not gonna last very long. Um, so what we're proposing is that this would be dividended up and it, it, we're, the path goes like this, but really the dividend would go like this, through Corp to Dominion Energy. So all the equity in these companies would be dividended up. Dominion Energy would, would hold that equity, and then it would, it would contribute that equity down to Fall West Holdco. So that's how the transaction would work, and that's what's being described in, in paragraph seven. So it's really an accounting exercise. You've got all this equity sitting at the, at the Q Corp level and that's how you get that's how you move the equity of those companies is by dividending up and contributing down so that's what uh, paragraph seven is proposing and we're going to explain why we're doing it this way another question uh, how do you define interested parties so for us interested parties would be the division of public utilities office of consumer services and anybody else who intervenes so pretty pretty general definition of interested parties. Okay, so uh, this these two questions uh, relate to the debt of the entity. So will terms of any existing debt be affected by the consolidation? For example, will any of the companies that follow us hold coal retain any debt that is backed in any way by DEQC or other companies that are not in Fall West? So I'll, I'll talk about that. And then will the proposed transfer to Fall West Hold Co. LLC have any impact to the operating entity's access to capital? from the parent or other borrowing capacity? So the answer to, to the second question is no. We have a capital program, we're continuing to spend money. Uh, th this this uh, will have no impact on the company's capital plan or its capital needs. Um, so that's the answer to the second one. So let's talk about the answer to answer the first one. So Questar Gas gets its debt in three different ways. First is through long-term debt. So it issues its own debt. If you remember from the merger, uh, we talked about that uh, a lot, that Questar Gas has its own uh, debt and it has its own credit rating. So yeah, all of the long-term bonds, the 20, 30-year bonds that, that Questar Gas has issued are in Questar Gas's name. Those go with it no matter where it goes and really has no impact on who owns it or where it's sitting in a corporate organization. That one's really simple. Questar Gas also has some commercial paper that it issues in its own name. So same, same type of situation. These are agreements between Questar Gas and lenders. And so that debt will, the terms and conditions of that will not change until a potential sale closes with Enbridge. Those, those agreements will remain in place exactly how they're written um, until, until that happens. And then we have an intercompany revolving credit agreement or IRCA. And, and that's an agreement with D Dominion Energy, which is a, kind of a short-term borrowing, and it helps us take care of our day-to-day -day cash needs. And so um, that will remain in place um, until the sale closes as well. Um, and then just to, to clarify, once, once that happens, um, it, like, for example, if we have a balance in the IRCA, that balance will be paid down with equity and that entire um, entity would be transferred in a, in a potential sale. So that's how that would work. Any questions on that? Yeah, I have one, Kelly. Yeah. So uh, on the commercial paper, will the terms and conditions necessarily change when the sale closes? I mean, it's, it's still your paper. I, 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 right. I'm not sure why 
Yeah, I think I think the change. I don't think the terms and conditions would change. I, I think the question might be, do we pay down that commercial paper and replace it with another instrument, or or do we just let it go? Um, and I don't know that that's been been uh, discussed yet. But yeah, you're, you're you're right. I mean, if if we have commercial paper outstanding uh, during uh, when a transaction happens, those terms and conditions shouldn't change. I would agree. So so what you're saying is that that clause at the end there until the sale closes you're you're not suggesting that the sale itself will make the, the will make any will change anything just the decision makers may change and therefore the decision right. might change okay Got right it. so uh, I, I think it's important also to distinguish between the reorganization and the ultimate transaction I, mean, right. I don't think we're prepared today to speak about how this will all be treated in the sale and that will certainly sure. be addressed in the next docket um, but for purposes of the reorganization docket you should see no change right right Got it. Okay. Uh, question on the the conditions of the of the merger agreement back in 2016. So, does the transfer of these have any impact on the merger agreement, or do, do they comply or not comply? So, we went back and, and read through the merger agreement. There's 65 provisions, and we found three that talked about Questar Corporation. So, number two. Basically says at the effective time, Questar Gas will remain a direct, wholly owned subsidiary of Dominion Questar and will continue to exist as a separate legal entity with its own complete set of, book, of books and records. So, strict reading of that, and I'm not an attorney, but I'm going to give you my my legal uh, 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 opinion, even though I'm not an attorney, so I, I could do that. Um, the effective time, that did happen in the effective time, but there really was no... Um, certainty on how long that will last. So um, our, our, our opinion is that this provision really doesn't apply in this case. Number 15, uh, Dominion commits to provide 30 days notice to the commission if it intends to create a corporate entity between Dominion Questar and Dominion Questar Gas. Um, so we're, we're not proposing to do that in this, in this transaction, so this one really doesn't apply. And then number 22, Dominion Questar will not sell all or majority of Dominion Questar Gas's common stock without commission approval. We're not proposing to do that in this uh, in this docket either. So those are really the only three we could find that even kind of touched on it. Um, I'll, I'll let you make your own conclusions. Okay. Now this is these are probably the the important questions or you know the kind of the the meat of the presentation. Why why are you doing this? Like how does dividing the companies into three holding companies affect the transaction? And then why? Why are we even? Why are we even talking about this? So as I mentioned, we've got three utilities: East Ohio, who's regulated by the Ohio Public Utilities Commission; Questar Gas, who's regulated by the Utah Public Service Commission; the Wyoming Public Service Commission; and then PSNC, which is regulated by the North Carolina Utilities Commission. So um, we don't know about potential timetables. Um, on, on potential approvals or even how these will go in all these jurisdictions. But it's probably safe to say that they aren't going to all be approved on the same day. They're all going to have different, um, they've all got different regulatory structures, uh, different timetables. We, we uh, don't even know how they'll go in every jurisdiction. So in order to um, provide a little, a little more flexibility to the buyer and the seller in terms of closing transactions, um, it was determined that the best way to do this is to put each, you, each LDC in a separate holding company. So what that does is that allows, let's say, Ohio gets approval from the Ohio Util Public Utilities Commission before these other two. That allows the buyer and seller to close on that uh, without having to wait. Um, and so that's, that's really what the intent of breaking these out into three separate old co's are, is to provide maximum flexibility for closing the sale of the different LDCs. Um, so let's talk about question 16 and 20, then I'm going to go to 19. So 16, please specify if there's any goodwill from this transaction. Uh, no, there will be no goodwill. We're just moving entities from one holding company to another, so there's no impact on goodwill at all. Um, and then number 20, will this transaction affect third-party billing? Uh, no, it will not. That, that agreement is between Questor Gas and the third-party company, and so um, there will be no, no 
impact due to this reorganization on that arrangement. Okay, so 19, what are the benefits and disadvantages of doing this? So um, I talked about already the flexibility and ability for us to complete the sale at different times. That's, that's a benefit. There's also some tax efficiencies that I'm going to get into in a moment. Um, and those are the real drivers of all of this. And, and the tax efficiency is the real driver of why we're, we're structuring it the way we are. The disadvantages include increased administrative burden. Um, we had to create new hold codes. I, I had to make a presentation. You know, so uh, some administrative things that have to be done in order to, um, to let, these, let these reorganizations occur. Kelly, on that first yeah. bullet under benefits, is, is the, the acquisition um, contingent on regulatory approval across the board, though? I mean, if, if you get approval in Ohio, but don't get approval in Wyoming, Utah, or North Carolina, does the acquisition fall apart? I, and I don't need you to necessarily answer that. I'm, just, I'm, I'm questioning whether it really does allow the, the LDCs to be acquired at different times. I'm not sure the answer to that question. So three separate. Go ahead. No, you all have the answer. I don't have it. One of you, there please answer. Three separate agreements. <laughs> okay. They're three separate purchase and sale agreements. Okay. And they're not contingent on each other? Not cross contingent. They're, okay. They're each contingent on the regulatory approval within that. Sure. Got it. Okay. See? So one could not work out and the other two could go through and those two would be sold. Okay. Okay. All right. So I believe this is the time where we get into confidential stuff. Make you leave. Uh, Make you leave, Phil. John Harvey on the line. Just don't take it personally. Yeah. Do we need? Uh, um, let's Amber have a look from, at who's on the line. Andrew from Amber. I think so. And then okay. I want to just see. I didn't hear anybody else join. Yeah, I think Andrew needs to go. And then if we could just quickly have everybody else just confirm they're with Dominion. Yeah. If you have any. Parker's here too. Is that Chris Parker? Parker yeah. Okay. Yeah. Hi, Chris. Hi. I don't know if doing. Dominion folk could identify themselves. Could all the Dominion people on the line please identify yourselves? Like their phone number? You want to? Sorry, I could. One, sorry. If Andrew remembers, would I suggest that, that I should drop? Yeah, I, I think you need to drop, Andrew. Thank okay. you. Thanks, Andrew. Thank you. And then we've got somebody ending in 2-0. Hi, this is Austin Stewart with Dominion. Hi, Austin. Hi, it's Newport Guard with Dominion. Great. Aaron Lowry with Dominion. We've got somebody ending in 1-4. Katie Atwell with Dominion. Thanks, Katie. Who's 07? I'm sorry, did you say who's 07? It's Commissioner oh, hi, Harvey. Commissioner Harvey. Thank you. Who's 2-0? Yeah, hey, and then there's Alma Goaldi here. Thank you. And who's 4-8? Phone number ending in 4-8. Okay, great. Thank you. And then, do you recognize the 92 number that just joined? Uh, I don't. Who's the 92? It's Tyson Wilder. Hi, Tyson. Okay. Okay, I think we're good. And Thank then you. we've got the stream also. Yeah.